guess I'm driven by the injustices I see in my community. Many of these homes were purposely built as social housing. And to find that people often describing themselves as charities can just come along and throw these people out, knock their homes down, and redevelop them into high-rise apartment boxes for investors, I find that appalling. A parking space can earn more than a nurse in a year. In 2009, I started a master's degree at the London College of Communication and I started a project called Abandon Your Dreams. It was primarily focused on billboards and the absence of any advertising in them, which came about as a result of the banking crisis that happened in 2007, 2008. People had no money to spend and the advertising hoarding started to become blank. And I observed this and I found it quite interesting, so I started looking into it further. I would look for locations that had billboards in them. I, I would then have to wait until the billboard became void. And then in order to suit the mood of the images, I would also look for days where there was white or very pale skies. Everything really had to fall together well. All the pieces had to come together, the empty billboards, the empty skies, and the, the scene devoid of people. Some of the shots I would be up at six o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning and I would find quiet streets. So that they would be in quiet streets and they're very, very easy. Other, other locations were super busy, which often meant waiting for hours at a time. I think a lot of people presume there is a lot more Photoshop in the images than there actually is. Um, I've never removed a single person from any of the images. Uh, I don't, didn't remove the billboards. I was just patient and got them. I wanted to keep the streets empty during the photographs because I felt that the void within the billboards also represented a void within the dominant capitalist ideology that demoted the presence of humans or people into nothing more than consumers. And as there was nothing for them to consume, I wanted the space empty. I shot Abandon Your Dreams on a 5x4 Japanese cherry wood field camera. So a camera with absolutely no technology effectively similar to the very first cameras they used when photography started, with bellows, two standards, and a hood over your head to focus on a ground glass, on an upside down, very faint image. It's a very slow, disciplined way of working. It's very expensive way of working. You know, I don't go out and shoot 10 shots of each scene, um, and maybe shoot two, if I don't feel confident about the first one. Um, sometimes I go as much as four, but very rarely. But it produces stunning image quality. And more than anything, it's a very deliberate, way of working. It makes you think. You don't rush out and shoot. I think Abandon Your Dreams really got me very interested in activism. It's something I have carried on through in my practice. As a working class artist, which is quite a rare thing, I try and represent what's around me. I try and represent my community. I made work interviewing and made films with people and photographs with people who were being displaced from their communities in order for further growth. And so many of the sites that I photographed in 2009, 2010 are now gone. The billboards are gone, the brownfield spaces have gone, and they're now cathedrals of high capital, tower blocks, apartment blocks. It also references, of course, the billboards themselves, which are typically there to sell you dreams. And capitalism is based upon, and growth of capitalism is based upon your desire to keep purchasing, to keep spending, so the economy grows. We get to the status where, when they don't have anything left to sell you, when the billboards are empty, that you abandon your dreams. <laughs>